to today's project where I'm going to show you how to build this $2 jig for sharpening your Ellsworth gouges. I want to tell you that at the very end of this video, I will have the sketch of this. So if you hit pause and then go up to your browser and hit file, print, you will print this captured scene. Can't explain it why you got it on pause, so now I'll tell you later on, hit pause and print this. Now, watch. Since I don't cut with the front so much, I don't want to stop there. Hey, this is Captain Eddie Castle in the shop. I'm touching up my Ellsworth. I'm using my own basket situation, which is seven inches out, four inches down. That'll be on the tip sheet if you ever ask for it. And that's David Ellsworth, the map, and he's a guy that put these grinds out here years ago. But I'm touching it up using my jig. Right, and I've had a bunch of guys ask me where they can get this. Well, I sell these. They're about 20 bucks or 25 bucks. I don't recall. It depends on what the market bears. Okay, but it's a nice steel jig. And I've had guys say, send me the math. I'm going to get my son-in-law to weld me up one. Well, that's one busy son-in-law, let me tell you, because he gets calls every week. So I want to help the son-in-laws out. Mine's in the military. Great guy but he can't weld. Okay, this, look, this, two dollars, two dollars American. Yeah, it uses PVC, a bent bolt, and a wing nut. A little bit of math and a little bit of, well, I tell you what, if you want to know how to make one, watch. Just a three quarter. I'm starting with a nipple of 3 quarter inch PVC water pipe schedule 80. I picked up with the hardware for 63 cents. The more you do of these, and I'm suggesting you do some for your buddies once you've geared up for it, the cheaper it'll get. I'm going to tape it to a piece of square stock. Here I have a little rectangle of shop drop and I'm going to tape it on there as a safety measure when I cut it and you'll understand why I'm doing it when I cut it and see one more tip I should have passed along to you. Now I'm going to lay it on. I want a two inch piece of PVC so I'm going to mark it in just off the threads. You lose about three quarters of threads on each end of this which is why you do better buying in multiples. Now after I've got it marked out I'm going to turn around and cut it on my bandsaw. Now watch this closely. I didn't have that side grounded. Did you see it jump? Yeah, the safety thing didn't work out because I didn't pay attention. Second side goes much better. The grounding keeps it from bouncing and the square stick keeps it from spinning and burning off your fingertips or hurting you even more. Now I have it, I'm going to lay it out about three eighths of an inch from each end on each. I want to mark it and then I'm going to snap a point with my spring-loaded center punch and I figured out a way to measure around it and back and whatever and now I have one marked 3 8 on the front one on the back. I loaded it into my pen vise because that holds rounds pretty good and with the proper size drill bit from my quarter 20 tap I go ahead and drill this. You don't want to go too fast because you don't want to oversize drill it. Remember it's plastic, it will heat up and it will swell out and then you'll have a little bit worse hole than you need. You're going to need all the threads you can get when you do it in plastic. Now i got to remind you this can all be done in steel pipe. I come back over to the bench and I tap it with my quarter 20 tap. See the little pen case in the background? That's what I store my tap and drills in to keep them handy and together. That one's for the quarter 20. Now, tap both the front and the back. Now, I take my 7-inch rod. This is a carriage bolt I bought at the hardware. I bend it. 
you can't bend it at the threads, it'll snap. So you bend it past the threads and then you cut some of the threads off. And the other end, you sort of pencil point it a little bit. Now, when you thread your coupling on, you're going to have a jam nut, which you don't see there. You've got to be a little closer, there's a jam nut in there. Now, note, inside that rod cannot come higher than the inside surface of the rod, of the, the nipple. If it does, it'll hold your gouge up away from the bottom. You don't want that to happen. Now, get another little half turn, and then I'll take my 7 sixteenths and snug up my jam nut. You can't go real tight, but you can get it well, well. Now, what I don't show you here, but what I did was I put some super glue around that to prevent the vibration and just from keeping it from coming undone. Now, this part of the jig is done. Next part, thumb screw. Thumb screw needs to be altered a little bit. If you put a regular thumb screw down into the bottom of this quarter inch wide gouge, you will see that it will wobble around a little bit. So I'm going to take it over to the grinder and custom fit it to fit down in the bottom of that gouge. See how I pencil pointed a little bit? Now put that in. Oh, get this. I saw this in the catalog the other day for 10 bucks. This is a gauge you use for setting your tool two inches out of your gouge. Watch. You put it in your gouge and then you need to set it two inches. Remember the 247 math? There you go. Yeah. Now, now this is three scraps of wood from the floor of the shop. Half by two, half by two, half by two. Glue two together, square off the ends, glue the third one to it. That's all the magic there is to this thing. Goodness gracious. Well, I know they got to get some money for making it, but you should have two or three around the shop. That is a rake. On to this one. Put it now at the grinder. We set our tool out two inches. I'm going to do this left-handed to show you how easy it can be done. Because I am not left-handed. I'm going to slide my rig up. Get my two inches. I'm going to look down over the top and see that this is square with this, which lines up with that. Oh, what I didn't tell you was I put a little super glue in this nut and this bolt just for vibration's sake crank up the grinder. My basket seven inches out from the face of the wheel, four inches down from the center of the shaft. That's the basket for my Ellsworth cut. Don't dilly-dally on the tip. Make sure you're in the basket. If you stop on the tip too long it'll go flat. That's all it takes. That is an Ellsworth grind. Well there you have it. A jig to hold your English grind or Ellsworth grind tool, I'll go both ways, it costs you under two bucks. The setting jig for how to set it to the two inches, scrap lumber off the floor in your shop. You can't beat it guys, we're not out to spend money, we're out to turn some wood and make some shavings. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan, making shavings. You take care now, oh, if you need me? All you got to do is drop me a note right here. This address. I'll be glad to send one on to give you any information, the tip sheet, whatever I got that I can help you with. And, um, oh yeah, if you need to call me for more details, the phone number will be up in a second. Put this away. Yeah. All right. So that's what it's all about, guys. Get out in the shop and be careful. Oh, you know, if it's really, really sharp, it's time to turn the Freedom Pen. That's right. Sharpen it up today. Turn the Freedom Pen. This thing, oh yeah. Me and a thousand year old Cypress is going to work right now. Oh, we about to hurt some wood. Yes. Come here, wood. Come here, wood.